Well, hello everybody, my name is Sarita and welcome back to another episode of Dress in the Sky, the third. This is a bonus episode again, and today we are going to the 10th Star Door, and it's about Ren. So, yeah, let's just go in. That's going to be a trial too. Hopefully, Ren can take them down. How many monsters are? One? Dozen? Alright, one big guy and three or four small drone, robot thing, whatever, I forget its name. Fogel, yes. So let's use an art first, I guess. I will use Ariel. Alright, it didn't do any damage to her. But it's butterfly, so that's bad. Well, we died. <laughs> Great start there. Attack once. Good. And let's just escape immediately. Rende. Or Rendedy. Huh, not bad. Oh, thank you. As long as we don't get petrified, we should be fine. Come on, Ren. You can do this, sir. One down. Ouch. Thank you for the heal. Oh, never mind. It's not heal. Freak. You stole my crap points. God damn it. Oh, God again. Freaking hell. Ren gonna die here. So close. Damn it. I can't get close to him. To the freaking robot. I guess I'm gonna use an item. Quinley cookie? Sure. Let's throw it. Ah, it didn't do much. Damn it. Come on. So close there. Restart. Fucking hell. Come on, Ren. You can do this. There we go. Now let's finish the rest. Let's just come it through. Oh, wow, that's nice hit. Good job, friend. Now time for the story mode. Loading. Complete. Powder Mother. Torden Factories. Gordon's class technical archaism development plan. Outer Torden Factories. Code name Powder Mother. We intend to develop a cutting edge archaism that inherits the DNA of the rest of the Gordias series while containing a more advanced control system. It will retain the same tactical effectiveness that was the primary development goal in previous models while allowing for more flexible and precise strategic usage as well. Effective radius. The archaism is intended to be accessible across the whole continent. 
powerful main and sub-engines should allow it to operate for several years without resupplying. Autonomous Compatibility The use of the most integrated or arithmetic logic unit will allow for advanced autonomous combat and effective identifying of targets. In addition, the Archaeum control system will make use of the operator's service system, allowing for reflexive, instinctive movements in combat. The operator will communicate with the Archaeum without being in physical contact with it. This will require a compatible candidate to be found and chosen. Dimensions Height and weight Overall height 15.5 arch Unit weight 55 touring So I think it's 55 ton 68 touring when, when fully armed Armaments The Archaeum Roman weapon will be its orbital energy cannons but they will have other kinds of orbital weaponry and even several gunpowder powered weapons as a backup. They will also have a revival system, which will use an augment to generate healing energy to heal or revive its operator in, in times of danger. And that makes it hard when we fight Ren during the second game in the tower. Armor material. The armor plating will be made using Cordelligan alloy. Cordelligan is the most fitting material to use, given that it is the most capable we have access to in all regards. For data regarding strength, see files on coastal plan. Current progress. New engines. Development is proceeding smoothly in line with the plans drawn up by Professor Novartis. Tests have also confirmed that they are already capable of providing power to the actuators. However, the professor has raised concern about the low responsiveness of the flight engine. This is especially true for the anti-gravity generator. He concluded that the engine as it stands cannot be put into actual use. The possibility of using boosters to provide additional propulsion is under consideration. Actuators Development of the actuators is experiencing a significant difficulty, as it isn't possible to simply use the same ones as the other archaisms. The increased size of the main weaponry means the archaism weight during combat is significant, and as a result, problems have been occurring in durability tests, especially with the leg joints. It may be possible to make improvement in this area by using precise control so the weight burden is spread evenly rather than focused on one point. Main Armament The orbital energy cannon that will serve as its primary armaments have been successfully tested. However, by order of Professor Novartis, the possibility of them becoming twin bonds is being analyzed, so they have yet to be equipped. The new orbital engines are expected to be able to provide enough energy to compensate for the necessary increase in output. Control System Experiments regarding the control system are currently ongoing. For the results of the experiments that have been carried out so far, see a separate entry. Experiment result. Tests of the control system continue to be performed. However, none of the test subjects have been able to realize the expected level of, of precision we are aiming for. The results of the main test conducted by the professor Novartis and his team can be reviewed above. As a result, the subject, subject A1, abnormality during phase 2, comatose. Oh, the subject, subject B3, abnormality during phase 3, cardiac arrest. The subject, subject C, abnormality during phase 1, insanity. Subject D7, abnormality during phase 2, comatose. The subject E3, abnormality during phase 2, cardiac arrest. The subject F2, of normality during phase 2, comatose. Oh, another one, comatose again. Comatose again. Subject A6, of normality during phase 4, mental breakdown. As can be seen, all of the test subjects failed to adapt to the control system. Nonetheless, the society continues to supply test subject, and we intend to keep performing further experiments. Future development. We have received word from the society that development is to be temporarily frozen. The reasoning is that the stability of the control system is, is in question. From now on, all the test subjects carefully chosen by the society will be taking part in connection tests. So we still haven't known about the certain factory. Test subject, subject R3, Ren, successfully completed all four testing phases. Note, the subject did experience a small degree of flashbacks. The subject, subject R3, succeeded in communicating with Pater Mother. Ascertaining the society's intention in regards to resuming development, subject R3 has succeeded in operating Pater Mother. 
ascertaining the society's intention in regards to resuming development. And that's how Ren got Father Mother. I see. Then that's Amira, thank you. And that's it. Really? Well, that was quick. I think I'm gonna move into the next door. Let's see. Start door 11. Those who seek to enter this door must first overcome a trial. I'm gonna change squad then. Be right back. Oh, this is different. Welcome back everyone. Hello? Ah. You okay, Rene? If you're feeling tired, why don't you rest here in the garden for a bit? All the others are here. You'll be alone. I'm not tired at all. I've just got something on my mind. Something's on your mind. Like what? Huh. Well, I suppose it can hurt. Let me give it a try. You are going to call Father Mother? Um... Father? Father! Oh! You gotta be serious! Yup! Damn! Are we going to use Father Mother now? Uh, I knew you'd come! Father Mother! Switch to standby mode! Right! That's that! Ren learned the Father Mother Gascraft. What? Ho 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 ho! Yes! We have finally have Father Mother! Hell yes! That was unexpected. Uh, Ren, eh? What? <laughs> and why do you all look so surprised? This word can be directly influenced by people's thought. We have established that much already. So why won't Father Mother come for me? Shit, man, that was a surprise. Anyway, I'm gonna change quad and go to another star door. Damn, I didn't expect Butter Butter will be available to use. Well, so this is our next star door, star door 11. And there is going to be another trial, so hopefully I can do it again, like we just did with Ren. Let's go. I think it's going to be tough. Another one of you guys again. Alright, this is going to be tough. Reflect art, so I cannot use art against them. Okay, I'm gonna rely on physical attack a lot. Good, Kevin. Riz, you're going to try to clock down all of them? Shazard, you're gonna clock up. Ren? Get closer, come on. Ouch. His style. Damn you. No, why are you gonna get close? Get back there. You are not supposed to be this close, you know? Damn it. God, I can only cock down three of them. No, just one. Wait. Ah, I forget that the that deep buff art still get reflected. I'm gonna use Gurgon Arrow. Hopefully, it could petrify them. Damn it, resist. Ouch, you bastard. Fine, I'm gonna use Chain. I have no choice. Let's do it. Good lord, that's good. 
Uh, race. Please hold race. Don't die yet. Fuck it, race. I'm gonna use your S craft. Yolo. Incoming nuke! Fuel! Damn! Ouch! Well, rest died. Ran to pick up Riz and Kevin will pick up Fran. All right, we should be finished after this. There's a lot of stuff that dropped there. Yeah. Oh, fuck, shares are down. Yeah. You know what, Kevin? Let's fucking finish this fight. not enough? Come on, son of a bitch. God, I am so mad because it's supposed to be quick. And the freaking Cypher dropped earlier. Made me freaking mad. Another one, of course. I forget that the freaking Guardian can't call allies. Board Shaker. Dang. Mute. That's annoying. Another War Shaker. Fuck. What should I do here? Let's keep attacking the pun guard. So close. Race, finish it. Now. Ah, come on, Race. Fuck. You're so damn weak, Riz. I need to waste more Sephet now because of that. Fucking hell, I am so pissed. Everything is, is not what I'm planning here. Fuck, so close. Let's let the arrow. Because I know it's going to explode once we defeat it. And finish it, Riz. Fucking finally. Oh, Alright. Look at that. The save it. It was previously at 8,000. Now we are in 7,000. God damn it. Come on, just let me see the story. Blue blank. An investigative report on Phantom Thief B. His crimes, 
It's a story and his true identity. Imperial Chronicle Investigative Team. Phantom Thief B has quite a lengthy and productive career in Tivari in the Empire, as the amount of records we have been able to find on his crimes prove beyond a doubt. From numerous paintings held in the Imperial Art Gallery, to a Septim Crystal held in the Imperial Customs Warehouse, to even a cutting edge tank held in an Imperial Army Research Facility, nothing is truly safe when he decided to steal it. His conquests are limited to inanimate objects. He has been guilty of pretending to be a military officer and eloping with the wife of a Marquess on one reported occasion. Really? <laughs> Yet, and this is perhaps the most baffling part, there is no concrete evidence to suggest he has profited from his exploits. Rather, the objects stolen usually end up in places so bizarre, their owners are liable to faint upon hearing about them. In other cases, they are transformed into mirror which is then rained down from the sky in areas largely inhabited by those less fortunate. Hearing this, one might be led to think him of a vigilant thief who takes from the rich and giving to the poor, but makes no mistake, the truth is not so simple. The wife of the Marcus discussed earlier is a fine example of that. As of this writing, it has been a little over half a year since the elopement took place, since then, she has remained uncounted for. Many of the items stolen by him may return to the public eye in some fashion, but not all. Between his eccentric techniques and bizarre behavior regarding the subjects he steals, it might appear as though his thefts are purely whims and nothing else. Upon studying the overall picture and reviewing the objects, and indeed, people, in play, you begin to see that they all have one specific thing in common. Take the artworks stolen from the Imperial Art Gallery, for example. Each of them were works of pure genius, painted by a master of their craft. But they gain a reputation for being too complex for the target audience for such a works, the nobility, and were simply stored away instead of placed on display. Similar could be said of the Septim Crystal, known for its unparalleled beauty. After being seized by customs, it was sealed away in the warehouse and doomed never to be admired by human eyes again. The tank, again, is one more example, where the supervising development cut short, rather than being put to good use, it was left collecting dust. As an aside, the case of the Marcus V does contain some striking similarities. This was marrying her. He devoted most of his attention to his concubines and barely spared a thought for her. In conclusion, we can see now that the underlying motive for his action is finding objects of beauty that have been abandoned by the world and freed them from their foolish owners. So I guess the Marcus' wife, previously being forced to stay in home from her husband, the previous husband I mean, which is why he wanted to take her and release her after that. No matter how the world may see his crimes, his motive is clear. The truth of that is evident is in the card he leaves before committing his crimes. This is the so-called liberation of beauty mentioned upon each of them. Phantom TV steals not for money, but for an ideal he believes in. And it is in this fact, we believe, are clues to his true identity. A number of valid theories have come about on the face behind our famed thief. Unfortunately, they are all as lacking and conclusive proof as they are numerous, and so it is impossible to say whether any of them are actually correct. To complicate matters further, we now even have deranged individuals coming forward pretending to be him and allowing themselves to be captured by the law enforcement. That is not to say, however, that none of the terrorists circulating are at all plausible. Here, we will introduce three such terrorists which have developed significant followings, and may not turn out to be not too far from the truth. Story 1. Amorous Con Artist Stan, or X. X Personality History. X is known for his exceptional skill as a con artist, having faked his own identity in order to engage in romantic relationship with many noble women. He was as handsome as he was capable, and he was exceptionally proud in nature as well. Born to a poor family in the temperate south, he became used to studying in order to make ends meet from young age. According to a testimony from a companion of his at the time, he was never once cut for such a theft. The reason X converted from being a common thief to a con artist is believed to have steamed from the falling in love with a noble woman of much higher social standing than he. The rule of the aristocracy was absolute in the country he called home, and blessed romance between those of different classes unthinkable. With that in mind, he resolved to create a false identity in order to make his dream possible. Following his first rousing success, he came to do the same on a myriad of other occasions, indulging in one forbidden affair after another. 
It was almost 10 years ago that he was arrested on the suspicion of identity fraud, but he performed a miraculous escape from prison, and for since then, his whereabouts have remained unknown. Thoughts But experienced skills as a thief and his interest in forbidden romances with noble women sound remarkably like what we know of Phantom Thief B. Also worth noting is that despite using his abilities of deception to court those of fast failed, he displayed virtually no interest in their fortunes. That is to say, he can no financial benefit from his action whatsoever. Instead, he simply lamented that he was unable to indulge in them because of something as trivial as his social class. We conclude that this attitude bears a striking resemblance to the thief's own view on beauty. Theory 2. Tragic Artist Y Y's Personal History Y was an artist with a rather tragic past. Born to a middle-class family in the north, was hired by an influential aristocrat to be their personal artist, producing many stunning pieces of work. However, it was later discovered that it wasn't all he produced. On the contrary, he was also responsible for a number of counterfeit pieces. The one who hired him sought to profit through ill means thanks to his work, and so he created such a counterfeits under the noble's instruction. One day, however, Y suddenly left the noble's service. The reason remains unknown. This is where his tragedy begins. Immediately after leaving his clan behind, Y received a terrible piece of news. His lover, the daughter of a respected family, had been killed in a traffic accident. While there is no evidence to prove as much, it is rumored that the noble may have had a hand in her death. Y was on spot once more at his lover's grave before forever disappearing from the public eye. To those who knew his story, he became known as the truly tragic artist. Several years later, the noble was murdered. Thoughts the story of Y still has several unsolved mysteries surrounding it and has invited much speculation, but of which have likely led to the theory that he and Phantom Thief B are the one and the same. Those aren't the only reason, naturally. Phantom Thief B has been known, at times, to try and dispose of counterfeits, believing them to be false beauty. This has led them to believe that Phantom Thief B may be attempting to read the word of counterfeits that he himself created. Lending further credibility to this is the discovery that the forgeries disposed of by Phantom Thief B were indeed the worst of Y. Theory 3. Skilled martial artist Z or Z. Z personal history. The story of Z is significantly different from the other two potential identities we have proposed here, making this unusual but still possible possibility. Z was born in the Far East as a son of a famous military family. He was an attractive, delicately built young man, but he was far more skilled and at martial arts than his friends would have suggest, being blessed with a great natural talent. He is also said to possess a keen, sharp mind, and there was a mild air of arrogance about him too. Zed was indeed a blessed in nearly every way. He came from an important family, he had skills, he had looks, and as a result, he came to feel bored with the world around him. He hardly kept such a thought to himself. In fact, he often voiced his complaints to anyone within earshot. This complaints persisted until one day, he simply disappeared, telling no one where he was going and leaving nothing to suggest his next destination. Thoughts Much of this theory is based on the idea of geniuses being eccentric by nature. There are some who say that the fighting style of Z has some resemblance to the peculiar skills used by Phantom Thief B. But in terms of credibility, this theory is merely a cut above many other similarly unusual suggestions. Still. The idea that the main beneath the mess is worn from the east is certainly an interesting and exciting one, leading many to wish it were true, even if they find themselves doubting it actually is. That brings us to the end of outlining three very different theories. God X, Y, Z, be the true identity of our famous Phantom Thief. Or is the truth perhaps something else entirely? The only way we will know for sure is to hear the truth from the man himself. Of course, whether we can trust anything he says is a discussion for another time. Postscript After this article was first published, we received a card believed to be from Phantom Thief B himself at our office. The contents of the card are as follows. The truth of my identity is already within your grasp. My number reveals all. Judging by this, it is believed that one of the three theories proposed is the true identity of Phantom Thief B. So it's X then, because Blue Blank is the X enforcer, and X means 10. So yeah, the X theory is the right one. Gotcha. That said, uncovering the meaning behind his force has proven to be a trying task. Will one valid reader be able to step forward and solve what we cannot? 
Only time will tell. Well, I just solved it. That was very easy. So now we know the backstory of Phantom Thief B. Well, that's it for this bonus episode, everyone. My name is Adita, and I hope you guys enjoy this bonus episode. And I hope you guys enjoy the side story. We unlock Battle Mother, and we now know the backstory of Blue Bling. And I can't wait of using Battle Mother in the future. So anyway, see you guys later in the next video. Have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye. See ya.